Welcome back to Business Office Specialist. In today's video, we're going to be exploring spreadsheets by using the Google Suite app, Google Sheets. Now, if you're used to Google Docs and word processing systems, a spreadsheet like this one is going to look very different to you. But the more you use it, I think you'll find that many of the skills that you've picked up in word processing like Google Docs carries over into spreadsheets like Google Sheets and will help you to be successful quickly using this software. But there are a few differences that we ought to point out. First of all, when you're using a spreadsheet system like this one, the names for the files are a little different. A file for a word processing system is known as a document. In a spreadsheet, it's known as a workbook. Inside of a document, you have many pages that you can work with. And the software will automatically move you from one page to the next when you run out of room. But if you look at a spreadsheet software like this one, it's really hard to run out of room on an individual page or sheet. If I scroll all the way to the right, you can see that it extends well beyond my page or my viewing area on the screen. And if I come down, I can scroll down and down and down almost forever. And even if I hit the bottom of my worksheet at a thousand rows, I have the option to include even a thousand more rows if I wanted to. So how do you move to a new page in a spreadsheet software if there is no end? Well, first of all, workbooks don't have pages the same way that a word processing system would. They have what's called a worksheet. And it's called a worksheet because it could span multiple pages um, of paper when it's printed. And it could be very small or very large. The size varies depending on the data that you put in it. So a file in a spreadsheet software like Google Sheets is called a workbook, and the individual pages are called worksheets. If you want to move to a new worksheet, you can't just reach the bottom and it automatically switches you over like a word processing system. Instead, you have to create a new sheet. And that's done at the very bottom left of your screen. You can see the very bottom left, there's a little plus button there. That's to add a new sheet. So if I click on that, it will create a new sheet for me. In this case, it's called Sheet 3. And down below your document is a little bar where the tabs for each sheet will become available. And you can click on that sheet to identify which sheet you're working on and to move between the different sheets. The white tab is the one that's currently active, the one that you're currently looking at. So let's come back to the top of our worksheet, sheet one, and talk a little bit about some of the other terminology that we have here in a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet is essentially a very, very large table. So a lot of the same terminology we use in tables carries over into spreadsheets. For example, each of these individual squares is known as a cell. If you stack a bunch of cells together vertically, we would call that a column. If you laid them out horizontally, we would call that a row. So that kind of makes sense because if you think about the word column, it's usually used to describe things that are vertical, like columns on a building. And the word row is usually used to describe things that are horizontally grouped, like a row of chairs or a row in a field. Each individual cell in a spreadsheet also has its own unique location or name called an address. This helps us identify very specific cells that we are using inside of the spreadsheet. This will be very helpful when we're working on projects together through these videos because I'll tell you to work in a very specific cell and I'll use the cell addresses to help you know which one. A cell address is simply a letter number combination that identifies the column and row that that cell is located in. For example, if you look at the cell that I have highlighted in blue right now, that is in column A, row 1. So that would be cell A1. Its address is A1. If I were to move my little highlighted square over here, for example, now I am highlighting cell D4 because it is in column D and row 4. Incidentally, that blue square that highlights that particular cell is known as the active cell. So it's just indicating to me which one is the active cell. The active cell is the cell that I currently have selected and that I can type into or edit right now. If I wanted to work with a group of cells, a group of cells is known as a range. So let me highlight a small group of cells here. 
This is a range of cells. To identify a range, we use a combination of two addresses, the cell address in the upper left corner and the cell address in the lower right corner. So if I wanted to identify this range, I would sell, say that this is the range D4, which is the cell address for the upper left corner, through G8, which is the cell address in the lower right corner. If I wanted to write this in spreadsheet terms, that would be written as D4, a colon to indicate the range, and then G8. So if I saw something that looked like that, I would know that is the range between D4 and G8. So that's just a few brief terms to get you introduced to the world of spreadsheets. We'll learn several more as we move throughout our different projects in this course, but that's enough to get you started. To learn more tools and features in the Google Suite family of apps, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit ToriNorman.com.